Hello, I'm Aksuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Are you ready to receive a miracle today? Join me right now. Say, Father, I believe and I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming from you and I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now I've been sharing with you on Jesus, the glory of Jesus. And that glory brings us into oneness with the Father. And I told you that glory is the Holy Spirit. The glory of Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Now I want to show you something from the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. I want to show you how this glory works and how it brings us into oneness with the Father. Genesis chapter 1. Now, from verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This happened in the beginning. Praise God. And verse 2 says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now the Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the waters. And then look at verse 3, it says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Now look at verse 6, it says, And God said, Let there be a firmament, and there was in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which, are, which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so, and God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Now, take note of what's going on here. Now, if you continue up till verse, and verse 26, you will see God creating Things and so he got to verse 26 says, Let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. Now, I want to bring something to your understanding here. When God was speaking, when God was creating, first of all, understand that in the whole book of Genesis, chapter 1, describing how these things were given by revelation. So, so the writer was writing by revelation and he is writing this many years, many, many years after this had been done. <laughs> he understands. So he wasn't writing like when this thing was taking place. No. So he was writing a summary from the place of revelation. See? Now, but understand this truth. You know, we say God created everything in six days, right? Yes, he did. But he didn't physically create anything in six days. What I'm saying is nothing came out from all his creation. Nothing changed physically in those six days. Actually, after those six days, everywhere was still dark and black. Nothing, nothing. The wind did not even move a dust. So what was God doing? He was speaking. God was speaking in darkness. Kaluma Supra Ida Haskia. Not moved, waiting physically for anything to move. Now, now, if you don't learn this from God, Aila Kwasile Pereteya. So God was speaking. Day one. He was speaking. Now, 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 why I read this to you in Genesis chapter 1 is because you know, it appears. God just said, and God said, let, let, let there be light. And there was light. And then God separated the light from the darkness. He called the darkness night and called the, the light day. And it's okay. I'm done. Is that all? Oh, <laughs> praise God. No. No. The writer is just giving us a summary of what God said on that day. But God spoke. I mean, God spent the whole day speaking. He spent the whole day speaking about light and darkness. Yes. That was the day God defined everything that is light. And that's the day God defined everything that is darkness. He defined it on that day. 
day one. He created it. He created everything that represents light, everything that represents darkness. He created it that day by speaking. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, I was fellowshipping with the Lord recently and then the Lord said something to me. He said, have you ever wondered how God was able to speak words unto eternity? From the beginning, he spoke creation unto eternity. There are things God has said, there are things God said in that day one that have not yet been revealed. Physically, I mean. So, so those were, have you wondered how God was speaking and I was like yeah his voice is like the voice of many waters so God can be speaking multiple words at once and then I heard the voice of the Lord say this to me oh so comforting so true you see I never I ne personally maybe you did <laughs> but I never thought about it this way and he said to me God was speaking in Tongues. <laughs> Praise God. God was speaking in tongues. Now, let me, let me explain this. God was speaking as the Spirit gave him utterance. Is it getting better now? God was speaking, of course, he wasn't speaking English. Of course, he wasn't speaking Hebrew. He wasn't speaking Aramaic. No, he wasn't. God doesn't speak any language. <laughs> you are the one that understands God in a particular language, not because he speaks in that language. Someone say, ah, God called me in my native tongue. God called me my native name. No, he didn't call you your native name. He spoke to you. You heard your native name. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So not like God said, okay, I want to speak his language. Let me speak. No, sir. God is a spirit. He communicates to your heart. Your heart downloads it to the, in the depth and the understanding that your mind can receive. The purpose of God speaking to you is that you hear him. You know that, right? Yeah. And then number two, that you understand him. So the way you understand God is the way he will speak to you. That's why you don't criticize anybody when they say, God spoke to me like this. It's none of your business. The most important thing is, did you understand what God was saying? Yes, I do. That's all. If we start comparing, someone say, he, he spoke with me like, I mean, it's like I heard my grandfather's voice speaking to me. Like, How can God use your grandfather's voice to speak to you? Oh, yes, he can. If you're used to your grandfather's voice, yes, he can. Some people say, oh, it's like my pastor. Yes. Some people say, oh, it's like I was talking to myself. Yes. Yes. But how you know is God, it impacts you with knowledge. I mean, I mean, it impacts your mind with knowledge. So why you think you are speaking to yourself? As you are speaking to you, not, not moving your mouth now, no. So say, I'm thinking. That's how many, many times a lot of people hear God and they think they are the ones thinking. But truth is, while you are thinking, knowledge is being impacted to you. So while you are thinking, the things you didn't know before, you begin to know them in your thinking. So what that means is your thoughts are producing new ideas, new knowledge to you. That's not your thought. You're actually hearing a voice. Because knowledge comes from an external force. You know that, right? I mean, simple law of physics. A body will be stagnant until an external force is applied, okay? So your mind is stagnant by what it has already known. It can only move when an external force brings knowledge. And that's what the Spirit of God does to us. So we hear him differently. So you can say, I was the one thinking. And I go, my, it's like my pastor was speaking to me, just like Samuel's case. Samuel was hearing the voice of Eli, though Eli didn't call him. Now my son asked me a question recently. He said, 
Because I, I was trying to teach them that, you know, sometimes you're somewhere, you want to do something, you hear a voice. It might be like your daddy's voice telling you, hey, stop it. See? And, 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 then, and then he asked the question, Daddy, can I say something? I said, what? At that time that we hear your voice saying, stop, will you know? Is it that where you, wherever you are, will you know that you are, we are about to do something? <laughs> Is it as our children are thinking? I said, not necessarily. But we may have a witness because the Lord will bring it in our hearts at that point that we should start praying for you. And so we don't know why we're praying. And then the next thing, the Lord used the prayer we're praying and ministers to you. You see? So it's not like your dad is speaking to you from where he is. My son! And then you're hearing him for, I mean, in, in, in 1,000 kilometers away from you. No. It's the Spirit of God that is speaking to you. But because you know your father's voice as a voice of authority, because you know your mother's voice as a voice of authority, your pastor's voice, your elder's voice as a voice of authority, your mentor's voice as a voice of authority, you, you, you just seem to be hearing them talk to you. Now let's go back to what we're talking about now. God was speaking words in creation as the Holy Spirit gave him utterance. So now this brings you to one understanding. The Holy Spirit is the custodian of every word that was spoken in creation. Let me show you something in chapter 2. Now I'm going to read Haikuliatabaya. Let me read verse 31, chapter 1, Genesis. And God saw everything that he has made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now let's enter into chapter 2, right? Verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. Now the word thus there means this is how the heavens and the earth were finished. How were they finished? By God speaking. So God finished creating the heavens and the earth by speaking. That's what he did. In, that's what he showed us in the whole of chapter 1. God was speaking and he finished creating by speaking. And like I said, nothing moved physically. Okay? Now follow me. It says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. Did you see that? Everything that pertained to the heavens and the earth they were all finished in six days. Everyone. God never entered into creation again never till this day okay then verse 2 says and on the seventh day god ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made so god rested seventh day rest not resting out of tiredness but more like retirement not retiring because he's tired. No, like I'm done. I'm, I'm finished with this. Now follow me. Verse 3 says, And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Take note of the phrases. Now understand that the writer is writing by revelation as he's being told. So now when you have the same spirit, with the writer, okay? When you are reading, it's 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 important you question certain things. So now he, he, he says, for example, in verse 3, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Like, why did he introduce God again here? Why didn't he just say which he created and made? There's a reason. He is trying to split something here. You understand this? Now look at verse 4. He just told you, seven day, God rested. Then look at verse 4. Verse 4 says, These, these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. 
I thought he just told us that he finished everything in six days. He finished by speaking words. Now he comes here and say, now beginning from here, because verse 1, chapter 2 says, thus, that's, this is how the heavens and the earth were finished in the day that God created it, okay? Now he comes in verse 4. He said, now these, meaning from here now, these are the generations of the heavens. And now what, what does it mean generations? He says six days. Why is it? Now that's telling you that six days, nothing happened physically. Now life is about to start according to what God have created in chapter 1 by words. Now the generation of all those things are about to happen. So actually, life itself started from Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4. Genesis chapter 1 was, in, was done in darkness. Are you understanding what I'm sharing with you? Genesis chapter 1 was done in darkness. It was done in secrets. Now, life began in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4. That is when the world as you see it began. Because that's when things began to move. That's when things began to get formed. And notice, he said, in the day that the Lord God, he, that was the first introduction of the word Lord in scriptures. Now the writer is telling you that there is a difference between the one I was speaking about in chapter 1 and this one that I'm speaking about. So two people made the heavens and the earth. One, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, He did that in six days. Then two, the Lord God created the heavens and the earth. Who's the Lord God? It's the Holy Spirit. God rested. The Lord God took over. Now, he's the one that began to form things from the waters. He's, he's the one that began to split things. And the splitting of those things, the formation of those things, brothers and sisters, took years. That's why sometimes even in our faith, you know, we say, God said, let there be light. Pew! There was light everywhere. It became bright. No, 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 no. Praise God, no. Some of the things God spoke about, Till this day, he has not physically seen them on earth. Yet, he believes. The glory of Jesus. The glory of Jesus. Now you understand when I said God was speaking in tongues. And when he was done speaking, because the Holy Spirit was the one giving him the utterance, the Holy Spirit was the one storing all those words that he spoke to the details. And now, when the Holy Spirit began to do the work, which is the work of physically bringing things into being, He's doing exactly according to what the Father spoke. He's not adding to it. He's not subtracting to it. He's doing exactly what the Father spoke. Aye. Our time is up. <laughs> this is getting hotter. <laughs> you will learn a lot. You will learn. Your, your life is about to change for the better. Father, we thank you. Oh, we love your word. We love your word. How, how we love it. Thank you for your building us up and bringing us into the place that you have ordained for us, which is walking in your truth. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.